so amazing just to be caught up in the presence of the Lord. If you used to a, lit a liturgy that's very timed and controlled and you out in 60 minutes or 70 minutes, unfortunately, um, that seldom happens here. Doesn't mean you don't get out early. I proved that the other week. Um, but what you're experiencing is a follow-on of last week's teaching, the glorious standard of truth. Whenever truth is known, you have liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Truth always, and when you know it, sets you free. And this is the product of that freedom. Whenever there's freedom, in, whenever truth is proclaimed, freedom is made manifest. And the spirit of freedom is experienced by all. Now that freedom is in the atmosphere. But you can sit in an atmosphere of freedom and still be in bondage. Because you have not yet surrendered to the Spirit of the Lord. And you need to be born again. And I always make that call. If you here, if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, maybe you've been a good Christian but not been born again. You need to be born again. And last week, Amber experienced being born again, accepting the Lord. And I heard you tell everyone, why didn't I do this sooner? Now, if you're sitting here and you're waiting for later, rather do it sooner. Today is the day when you hear the word of the Lord. Just make up your mind. I'm coming to the cross. I'm going to wait for an elder to come and pray for me and lead me to the Lord and explain to me this glorious hope of salvation. So... If you hear at any time, you can tap any of these guys on the shoulder and they will, they will help you um, speak to the ushers. Don't, don't wait for the end of the sermon. You can, if, you, if you want the Lord now, if you want to accept him, don't, don't wait for me to finish. You just do it. That's, the most, that's why we preach this word. It's for eternity. And, and when you grab hold of eternity and want to be born again, Disrupt the environment. Make a noise. I want to be born again now. I want the Lord now. I will stop everything because that is the most important thing in this life is to be born again. So, and we're experiencing that here in this place. People are being born again. Some are being born again again. <laughs> um, because they realized they were born into a church. They weren't born again. So they needed to be born again again. I, Lauren um, challenged me and said, uh, Dad, you, Matthew's laying this foundation, glorious standard of truth. Now we need to talk about the glorious standard of grace and glorious standard of mercy and glorious standard of hope and glorious standard of love. Why don't we do a series? Um, and and um, I'm going to leave rather that to Matthew to do that series. But I, I, I want to tap into that teaching of truth and stretch us into something that I've been trying to explain for the last few months about building a strong family is building maturity and building maturity is what we do when we gather. We, 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 we encourage one another to move forward in grace into maturity. If we're only preaching for goosebumps, then we're wasting our time. We must teach for glory, and that glory upon glory, when we visualize it, the ultimate end is maturity. And so I, I want to just half meet Lauren and talk about glorious growth. Right, so we're moving from glory to glory. So if I were to title today, I would talk about glorious growth. So I will, I will like always, I will throw things out there and then leave it for others 
to capture and then bring it back and put it together in a, in a much better way like you experienced last week. You have the grace of teachers who grab things and they, they, they digest it and then they give it back to you in the most amazing package. And that's the grace that's in this house. So when we talk about glorious growth, when you're ready for what the Lord has prepared you for, you get what He's prepared you for. And you get the inheritance. You get what He's been waiting to give you. God is always a father who wants to, to bless and spoil. He's a giver. He's the first giver. He's the greatest giver. And He's demonstrated this by giving His Son. And, and if you ever think that the Father is just there to give you a set of rules, He's there to give you love and abundance is a god of abundance he wants to bless tell somebody he wants to bless you but some blessings you cannot access yet because he's protecting you from what will happen to you if you immature to receive the blessing i know many people that i've journeyed with in life who had come into success and they come from ex very poor backgrounds they never had anything but when they achieve success and many of you know people like that particularly um, in our culture when they acquire success what's the first thing they do BMW <laughs> I don't know why they don't buy a Mercedes they buy BMW <laughs> um, and, and I, I, I won't say what it is, the meaning of BMW on the Cape Flats, um, but, but I, all of you know I'm the circle guy, the Audi guy. Those, those um, circles, and if there's an R near those circles, then, then we're talking, then we're talking. But... Um, somebody reminded me last week what those circles mean. It's what your bank account looks like when that car breaks. <laughs> it's empty. Um, and I want to say that, and, and, there's, and I've said it in this house, some of you are going to be elevated, you're going to be promoted, and there's a blessing on this house for you to excel and to, to rapidly move forward in the things of this world, all right? And, and I want to say, be careful because success can be dangerous, right? And, and I'm seeing it in this house. I'm seeing how your businesses are being promoted. Um, when nobody else has got work, you, you're overloaded with work. Be careful that you, you're not distracted by that that you become so pressurized that you start looking into your own self to provide the answers for that work, right? You must now learn to be mature and realize that God has brought you into this place of promotion. He needs to provide for your capacity to deliver, not your ability, right? It's the, the, the capacity of the Lord, the grace that He has to give you that you can function at that level. Otherwise, you're going you're gonna to become nervous, you're going to become anxious, and you're going to resort to knowledge, the tree of knowledge, and then you're going to function from that, and the Lord cannot bless you with grace. So you start to function out of fear, and, and you start to employ the principles of Cain and strive in, instead of being an agent and come to the Lord is saying everything I have is from you all right so you, you have to come with that heart and so um, this this week I can finally say Lauren has been promoted she's now the Department of Education um, she's now finally got a headship in department uh, so so she's following a grandfather um, and his, his mother, who was, I think, the youngest principal. Um, Lauren's the youngest department head um, in the school. And so I think one of the youngest heads for the Department of Education. And that's a grace that's flowing. Um, 
And to the young people in this house, many of you are wondering, what am I going to do? The youth unemployment in this country is over 70% right now. And I want to say to these young people in this house, you don't need to be anxious. You don't need to be anxious. Trust the Lord. If, if you're waiting, wait on the Lord. Don't wait for the company to respond. But don't be idle in waiting. You can be busy and wait. Um, there's grass that needs to be cut here. <laughs> don't be idle in your waiting because we think that waiting is, is watching series. Waiting is actually waiting on the Lord, being active in your waiting. All right. So glorious growth. What does that mean? What do you call a, 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 an adult man who has the mind of a five-year-old? Don't say my husband. Don't, don't. What do you call an adult man, a grown man, whose, whose mind is still a five-year-old, where people need to take care of them, um, need to still put food together and help them eat? What do you call that? No, a, five, a grown man who's still got the brain of a five-year-old, it's a tragedy, right? It's a tragedy. It's, you, if you see somebody like that, and I, uh, some of you might have known people who have had injury or um, um, brain damage at birth, and so their development has been, been stopped. So they, they can't, their brain, they've got physical problems with their brain. So they, they've never matured and they can't reason. And, and that's a tragedy. And I'm sure Yvonne won't mind me using her as an example. When she was born, she suffered brain damage. And doctors said she would never, ever be able to walk, read, write, or be a normal, live a normal life. Today... Um, she has just retired as a theater sister. Um, she is the most compassionate person I know. Um, she even keeps pets, pigs as pets. Um, and the most caring person if you ever need anything or she's always ready for advice. But she has proven what others said wrong. The diagnosis of Dr. She, she is a walking example that they are limited in what their knowledge is when God is at work. So, but why do I use this example? Because there are people who, who have been in church for many years who still have the mind, the spiritual mind of a five-year-old. They, they've been saved for a long time. They carry the title. You call them brother. You call them sister. You, you expect them to be grown up because they've been around for a long time. But their spiritual maturity level is still of a five-year-old. Um, they, they can't relate. They can't handle certain things. And they respond in certain ways. And what do you call that? A tragedy. And I think heaven is dealing with lots of tragedies at the moment. Uh, the, the, the Christian, the church, the, the body that should be mature is struggling, is struggling to grow up. And I want to say in this season we're coming to a standard of glorious growth that's equivalent to the standard of glorious truth. As truth is being revealed, there are truths being revealed to us now that we need to hold on to. And we need to move from milk to meat. Tell somebody, milk to meat. You can see somebody that's still breastfeeding at 30 years old. Right? Their teeth is rotten. <laughs> Right? Because they should have been eating meat, but they, 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 they don't want that diet. They refuse. And I want to say, there are some of us, and there are some Christians, who need to move now from milk to meat. You need to move from glory 
to glory. You have to upgrade. Your time for your contractual upgrade has come. You get more airtime. You get more bandwidth. You get more data. You get more downloads from heaven when you mature. When you immature, heaven is shut because you cannot handle what needs to be deposited in you. I want to say when it's, it's time for your upgrade. Do you get it? Tell somebody, time for my upgrade. So my scripture reading is Galatians chapter 4 verses 1 to 8. <clears throat> Now I say that the, the heir, heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. And this morning the father was here, and it was his appointed time. Even so, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God sent forth his, the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. May the Lord bless his word. <laughs> Sister Ethel blessed me this morning. She ministered out last week, and everybody wanted the notes. I think all her friends are coming on the next encounter. <laughs> but she said something, and, and I realized we're getting it. The church is arriving. She says, as sons of God. Normally, she would have said, as children of God, or as a daughter of God. But she says, as sons of God. Spiritually, we are sons. There's no gender when it comes to your spirit. We are sons. And this morning was one of a precious time where my, where my soul caught up with the fact that God is my Father. Yes. Do you know in worship you can worship and sing nice songs, but when your soul realizes that God is your Father, all striving stops. You are completely surrendered because that soul needs to be brought under control. So I'm going to do a very short exegesis of this passage of Scripture. I'm going to target certain words just to amplify. And hopefully we, somebody else will go on, or if the Lord allows me, I'll go on. And the word there that Galatians opens with is, as long as the air... Not the hair, the air, um, very English is so difficult. As long as the air is, is a child, all right? So the word I want to target there is air, because you are an air. It says, as long as the air, you are an air, and air has an inheritance. All right? So there is an inheritance. It, and it, the scripture there is not talking to some who are in Christ. It's talking to all. All right? So everyone who is in Christ here is called the, an heir. 
So if you are in Christ, you are an heir. Tell somebody you're an heir. Now you need to know what an heir or an heiress means. An heir means that you have an inheritance. Doesn't that get you a... I know, I know, I know. I mean, uh, in our communities, when they say you have an inheritance, um, it's probably going to be a piece of jewelry. All right? From Galaxy or Stearns. Um, but when God, your Father, says you are an heir, you need to get excited. Because what does he own? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, just think about it. What does God own? Everything that is and is to come. All that is. The cattle on the thousand hills, are all his, nothing can exist. There's no government that can even stand without his saying. So he owns everything and he says, you the heir. Doesn't that get you excited? But, but if it gets you excited, you need to know that it says, as long as it's still a child. So let me tell you about the word e. In the Greek, it's, it's kleronomos. It's made up of two words. All right, the, if, you, you have, if you get this, now, uh, you, you, this is some of the meat. If you're going to chew on this, you, you're going to grab it. And I'm just going to do... The exegesis today just on this word. But if you get it, you're going to run. Because you, you're going to get the rest of this passage. Kleronomus. It's, <clears throat> the word is made up of two words. The first word is kleros. It's an object used for casting or drawing lots. So it was normally pieces of wood. And when they drew the right piece of wood if people were in a group and you you drew the right piece like with the disciples they drew lots for the to replace the apostle um, there were 12 and then there were 11 after Judas and then they had to draw lots and then they drew lots and then there were 12 because they drew the lot that piece of wood that they draw was the from the same word kleros right so you've been drawn Right? So it's a casting of lot. But it comes from the verb to break. So this wood had to be broken into big pieces and la laid together. But the verb, the primary verb there is kleo. So just think, kleros is the root word for my inheritance. It's from pieces of broken timber that's been put together and it's drawn to be allotted. But it comes from the verb to be broken. It's the same word for what Jesus used for the bread broken. It's the same word for the breaking of communion. Do you see that the breaking has very much to do with your inheritance. To be an heir, you come through a process of being broken. Do, do you get it? That when things are breaking in your life, you are fighting to hold it together, and the Lord is saying, let me break it from you, because I want to bring you into your inheritance. Jesus had to be broken. What is the inheritance of Jesus crucified? It's you and me who come to the Father as His sons. That's the, for the joy that was set before Him. What was the joy? He saw us worshiping the Father as one. He endured the cross. So, if you're going through a breaking, just say, Lord, take it. Because your breaking is bringing you to an inheritance. There's no prosperity teaching in that nonsense. Because nobody wants to be broken. 
We all want to have the inheritance without the work. I want to say the Father will break you for what He has prepared for you. <laughs> and you thinking and you fighting against the breaking because you want to be all you. And the Lord saying, I'm preparing you for something greater. And never judge somebody by the depth of their breaking. Because you have no idea of the quality and quantity of the inheritance that's waiting for them. Somebody who's come out of a breaking is ready for a shaking. <laughs> the environment that they in is about to be shaken. When we were worshipping this morning, we were shaking the heavenlies. We were shaking the spiritual environment in this region. We were setting things in order. Some of you were getting tongues. You were speaking in tongues. You were speaking spiritual things into the atmosphere. And the Lord was building upon those things and establishing things in the environment. Don't expect things to be the same when you get home. The breaking has been shaking things because he was making you. In this place, you were in the making. Tell somebody, I'm in the making. <laughs> the Father is producing the, the kleros. He's drawing you, he's pulling you, and he's breaking, and he is choosing you. He's allotting things unto you. But... The word, that's why we had the communion this morning. But the second part of kleronomos is the word nomos. And nomos is the Greek word for law. Whenever word law is used in scripture is the word nomos. Right? But you need to understand that the breaking and the clero and the nomos is an air. The nomos is the law. So you are broken, you are brought into communion, and you are chosen for the law. But don't, don't think, this is where the Jews got it wrong. They thought the law was the Mosaic law. And they missed it. They missed it. The law, the first level of nomos, if you go and study the word and you look at the scriptural context, the first level is social order which Moses put in place. At Mount Sinai, God gave him a social order on how they need to survive while in the desert. The first level of an heir is to understand how things work. For some of you who are being promoted who are about to be accelerated in being promoted, you need to understand how things work. All right? Graham's company is never going to grow if he doesn't understand the technology of what his company needs to do. All right? He needs to understand the basics. It's the first level of law. It's the first level of your inheritance is to have understanding. You need to acquire the knowledge so that you can understand. But you have to move from understanding to wisdom. And the Spirit of God is called the Spirit of Wisdom. So for those who are being accelerated, you need to move from knowledge, understanding, and ask God for wisdom now. Because the complex problems of the world that needs to be solved, it's not going to be solved with AI and with knowledge. It's going to be solved with wisdom. And you are the bearers of wisdom. Because you have been broken to the point of knowing He's my Father. And everything I have comes from Him. The second level of nomos, if you're going to read it, it's reason. It's where you need to be able to reason with your mind. You need to be able to think. You need to be trans 
transformed through the renewing of your mind. This shaking and this making is bringing you into a formation which Romans chapter 12 talks about. We need to be transformed through what? Through the renewing of our mind. And the second level of nomos is to bring us into a place where we can understand, we use our mind, and we think clearly. For those who have an anger management problem, oh, it's at the other church, not here. <laughs> All right? What happens when you are angry? You stop thinking clearly. You stop reasoning properly. And that's why Proverbs keep telling us, don't try and reason with an angry person. Because then you're just as foolish. When somebody is angry, don't try and talk. And then you're going to try and explain, mommy, daddy, it wasn't me. Then you still get hiding. Because you were arrogant. <laughs> you, all you do is you have to learn to be silent in anger. You have to learn to pray in the Spirit. And the enemy knows how to trip you up, especially those who still have the, f you know, the short fuse? Have you heard that statement? All right, I'm tall, so I don't have a short fuse. Um, but those with a, with a short fuse, they, it means that when they light the fuse, the cracker goes off. <coughs> the dynamite explodes when you put the match to it. And, and some people are like that. Um, you, you, who knows people? I don't know, no, unfair question. But you know people like, I, I, I mean Christians. You, you just light the fuse and it's, and pizza's all over the place. It's explosion. There's some Christians, you just show them the matchbox. <laughs> and then they explode. All right? They just see the match and then they, the fuse is, is gone. You lose your capacity of nomos when you're angry. That's why Jesus didn't even need to open his mouth. Reason. The second level of nomos is to be able to reason. We have to, in our, if we're going to access this inheritance, we have to come to this place of self-control where we bring the soul and the functions of the soul under control of the spirit. And we reason. The word of God says, let us reason together. God wants you to reason with him. It means you need to come to his level to reason with him. All right? So the second level is reason. Tell somebody reason. Not the song reasons. It's the reason. We have to think think clearly but this is the key that I want to leave and close with today as laying just laying a foundation about glorious maturity it is the third level of nomos which is the highest level of law that when you are broken and when you are chosen and when you are kleros by the Lord you need to operate at this level of nomos. You know what that is? It's love. It's the highest level of law. That's why Jesus says, when they asked him about, when the legal people came to him and asked him about eternity, he always spoke to them. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. And then you shall love your neighbor as yourself. He always brought it back to love. When Peter failed him, he didn't ask Peter, did you keep the Ten Commandments? He asked Peter, do you love me? When he went to the cross, what hung on the cross was love. God put love on display. And love became visible for you and for me. And I want to ask you today, the highest level of your inheritance is to come and be love.
Do you understand? When you meet somebody who's broken and they've recovered from it, they're not arrogant. <laughs> they, they, don't, they don't show off <laughs> because they realize that what they have can be gone tomorrow, that who they are has got nothing, it's actually nothing. People who have been, been humbled, when you come into their presence, you cannot help but experience love. I've, I've met many people who had encountered Nelson Mandela, and they said whenever you, was, you were in his presence, you experienced humility. He was the most humble person. And, and from his chef to you know, people who nursed him in the end, they say he was the most humble man. I, I don't have that privilege of saying I met him. But the, the complete narrative from everyone who had been close to him said he was humble. I think all those years in prison has a way of humbling you. It is a kleros, chosen to be broken. And in that breaking, you are made into somebody so lovable and so loving. I leave that with you this morning to ask us, what are you praying for? If you pray, Lord, give me my inheritance so that I can pay the bank, so I can settle my bond. Lord, give me my inheritance so that I can get in the next job. Lord, give me my inheritance so I can have a relationship back with that person. Give me my inheritance so I can walk in victory in this area of my life. Give me my inheritance so I can get a new car and don't need to Uber anymore. Give me my inheritance so that I can, you know, get this. If you are asking God for things, then you're still a child who still needs to be under guardians. That's what Galatians is talking about. But when you are broken and tested and persecuted and you can still love under fire, <laughs> you're producing fruits of righteousness. When they, when they persecute you and when they test you and when they crown you with thorns, you say, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Then you are kleronomos. You are the heir. And Jesus took that Adam and he shared it with you. And he says, be love. Do, do, when you are persecuted at work, what's your response? Let me get my lawyer. <laughs> when you are tested in your family, what do you do? Let me just phone the pastor. <laughs> when you are tested for your stuff being taken and, 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 and things are taken from you, what is your response to that? That's the test of maturity. You know the best test of any element in this world? It's called the stress test, right? You do a stress test. A vehicle, before they, they, they approve it for fitness, they put it through a stress test. Metal, before it gets used for its purpose, it gets put through a stress test. Husbands, <coughs> before they become fathers, must be put through a stress test. It's called dating. <laughs> a stress test. And I say, girls, if he doesn't come running on his knees, um, if he's not running after you, uh-uh, put him through a stress test. And if he's giving you stress, post him back to his mother. <laughs> I want to say, 
If you are going through a stress test right now, you are just being prepared for your kleronomos. You are being chosen to reign. And if the test is great, get some other kleronomos around you because they know how to pray. Get some people who can support you and intercede with you and they can pray your daughter out of a coma. They can pray you out of persecution. They can pray you through the stress test. But don't try and terminate the stress test prematurely because then you won't qualify for fitness. Pray to the Lord that he will carry you through. Carry the, take the people around you, let them pray you through because you are just about to graduate from your stress test. And you are about to step into your clara nomos. You're about to get your stripes. And the Lord's about to promote you and elevate you and place you in positions of responsibility and authority that when you walk, the in spiritual environment gets ordered by your presence. That is a kleronomos. That is the maturity. That is the glorious maturity I'm talking about. And we all need to get there, including me. Will we pray together? Won't you hold somebody's hand as a support? Because maybe they are being stress tested right now. They are being stress tested right now and you don't know it. But you holding their hand, you carry the grace to transfer enough spiritual authority to say, I cover my brother or my sister. I cover them because I love them. And love is the greatest level of law. If you fail in this, we have failed. Let's grow up. Father, we ask for your love in our hearts. We ask, Lord, Lord, we see the world. We see the earth is yearning for the revealing of your sons. It needs your ears to be made visible, Lord. And Lord, we ask for forgiveness where we have failed, where we have quit prematurely, where we have given up, where we have, we have succumbed, Lord, and where we have fallen. We ask now that you will now lift us up, that your grace will be sufficient. I bless this congregation, Lord, to take on the inheritance with which you have called us to as a church, as a body, as a family. And I pray for those going through the stress test, those being tested, Lord, that you would choose them now to mature and grow and handle the authority that they are need to carry in the future. I bless your body. I bless your church. I bless the families represented here, Lord, that the things that they are going through, they will go through to get to what you have prepared for them. Lord, that you will accelerate it now in this house, that you will reveal it to them, that the hope of their salvation and the hope of their calling will become real in this place, that we will not look to the left nor to the right, but we will be encouraged, Lord. And I pray as we hold hands that this oneness and love will filter through every heart and every mind. In Jesus' name, I bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah.